Hi friends, welcome to another episode of So Honey Bee. In today's video, I am doing another tutorial from Sophisticated Crafts Designs. It is for this here, the all new Polly's Purse. Now this little purse or wallet is really full of all different kinds of little surprises. There are eight card slots along with a card slot on top for either vaccination card, a picture, whatever you want to put up here. But it is with a clear panel. Okay? And th that little flap has a snap right there. Also, there is a pocket with another snap right here. That pocket is quite roomy for just about anything. Then on the back, there is a zipper pocket. Okay? And I have my phone right here. And my phone fits in there just really well. Okay? So that is big enough for my phone right there. Then there is a main zipper pocket. You can put chapstick, keys, lipstick, lip gloss, whatever are the other little things that you usually carry. So you can use the wristlet strap or you can take off the wristlet strap and just hang it from something else or just drop it in your backpack or your purse or whatever you're going to carry. Now I sewed this using my Singer 4452 and it, it went together just fine. There were a few little hiccups when I was sewing across here with all these layers of um, card slots but it did just fine. I made this one here. It's the same exact thing, but it is using cotton canvas from Backstitch Fabrics. And the flap, it gave me an opportunity to use that as a little fussy cut right there, because I really do like fussy cuts. <laughs> and the same, the back zipper and everything. Now this one I used waterproof canvas to line the inside. Instead of using a wristlet strap, I added a little holder for antibacterial liquid right there. I really, really liked the way both of these came out. You can see that this little pattern works really well on cotton fabric or canvas. And you can also make it using vinyl using a heavier duty machine. Now I wanted to show you the size difference between her free pattern, which is a card holder, and this little all-new purse right here. So you can see the difference in size. And you could actually remove the wristlet strap and fit it right inside of there and then snap that up. So it gives you another little pocket inside of a pocket. <laughs> I really like the way that this pattern came out. And now, if you have not purchased the pattern yet, maybe you're new to Sophisticated Crafts Design Patterns, you can use the affiliate link in the description below and shop with me. It gives me a tiny bit, and then that gives me the opportunity to make more of these videos. Now, Jesse has also provided a coupon code for all of you who are watching this video. And that coupon code, I'll put it right here. Now, I really hope that you do sew up one of these. If you have sewn one up before, leave it in the comments below. Let me know what you thought about this pattern. Or if you have any questions or anything like that that you would like to say, <laughs> leave it in the comments below as well. Okay, so now let's get started with making this little purse. Now the first thing we're going to do is our wrist strap. There's no pattern piece for this strap, but you can find the measurements in the pattern. The size is determined by your swivel clasp. If you are using vinyl, what you can do is draw a line down the midpoint and use double stick tape on both sides of that line. What I did was I folded the two long edges down the center. Open that up and then folded in the edges in on themselves and then over again so that there are no raw edges for this strap. Now go ahead and add your swivel clasp and make sure your swivel clasp fits on there. Now join the two short ends 
making sure that the long edges are even with each other, and pin it. Or clip, whichever one you want to do. Now I'm going to sew across here using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Now clip the ends so that the bulk is reduced, but be sure not to clip any of your stitches. Now open it out right at that seam and fold these two edges in on themselves. Just like that, okay? So using a 1 8 inch seam allowance all the way around, back stitch. Then jump over to the other side and do the same thing, sewing in the same direction. Jump over to the other side and do the same thing. all your threads. Put the silver clasp right at that seam right there and either clip it or pin it. It's up to you. Now here's where you have a choice. You can either add a rivet or you can sew it across. Either way works. I am going to add a rivet to here. Now this is done. Let's set it aside for now. Now the next thing we'll work on is our D-ring. I prepped the fabric and folding it in on itself the same way that I did the wrist strap. Now I'm going to do the same thing. So one eighth of an inch seam allowance on both ends. So now my D-ring is done and I'm going to put this aside for right now. Now grab the main zipper. I'm using a number five and the zipper pull and the tab. Now I want to burn both sides of my zipper. Now I'm right handed so I want to make sure that my zipper closes from the right to the left. So I have to add the tab to the right side. Now if you are using a directional fabric, make sure that your tab is going the right way. Now I'm going to sew across using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Now fold the tab Wrapping it around to the other side. Fold it in on itself so that there are no raw edges and the stitching is covered on this side. Now top stitch using a 1 8 inch seam allowance. We 
we're done with this for now so let's set this aside so now I have the number three zipper with the pull and the four zipper tabs okay prep that zipper okay so now I'm using fabric for my zipper tabs you will have two exterior and two lining pieces now I chose the two prettiest pieces for my exterior and then the two other pieces for my lining I want my zipper to close from the right to the left so I'm going to work on the right side first I'm going to grab one lining piece right side up I'm going to put it on my zipper also right side up then I'm going to grab my exterior and put that right side down. And then you can either pin it or clip it. Now I want to sew across here using a 1 quarter inch seam allowance. Now I want to turn this piece out on itself and now I want to top stitch across here at a 1 8 inch seam allowance. Okay, so now it's finished on both ends. The length of the zipper from teeth to teeth is found in the pattern. Measure from this end and measure it to that mark. And now our seam allowance over here is going to be the same as over here. So I'm going to mark my seam allowance at a quarter of an inch away from that mark. So now that is going to be my cutting line. Now I want to do the same thing. I want to grab my lining piece, put it right side up with my zipper also right side up. Then grab my exterior and put that right side down. Now sew across at a quarter of an inch seam allowance, fold it back on itself and top stitch it just the same way we did over here. Now I want to trim it down to the correct size. Okay, so now my zipper tabs are complete and I've cut down or trimmed them down to the proper width. So now I want to find the center of my zipper. So I'm going to Put my two seams together right there. You can either mark this with a piece of chalk or a marker or a pen, but I'm just going to burn it. So now I want to grab pieces A and A1 which is the exterior and the lining to my pocket. Now put the exterior piece right side up. Your lining right side up also, making sure that your zipper is closing from right to left. I want to put them right sides together and clip across the top. Now I want to baste the zipper to the exterior at a 1 8 inch seam allowance. Now I want to grab my lining and put that right sides together with my exterior, matching my centers and clipping it all the way across. Now let me move my zipper pull to the center. 
Now I'm going to sew across using a 3 16 seam allowance. Now if you're using a number 5 zipper, you will want to use a quarter inch seam allowance. I want to fold this back on itself. Now I want to top stitch all the way across at a 1 8 inch seam allowance. Okay, so that looks really good, and I'm really happy with that. So now I'm going to get piece B, and I'm going to put right sides together. But I need to make sure my fabric is going the right way, because this flower here finishes off up here. So I want to make sure all my pieces are going the right way, and then clip it all the way down. Now again, I'm going to so, using a one quarter inch seam allowance. My zipper looks even. So now I'm going to grab piece A2. I'm going to put this right side up, which is lining pieces together. And then pin that on there. Now I want to top stitch this at a 1 8 inch seam allowance, same way I did it at the bottom. I want to make sure that my seam is going up so it is caught in that top stitch. I'm really happy with that. My zipper looks even and everything. Now I want to grab my main body piece and I want to trim down this panel so that it is the correct size. You can see that it's just a little bit off and that might be because of the seam allowance I used for the zipper. It could be a number of things. So I just want to just make sure it's all cut the same size. Now that is all the correct size. Now don't skip the step of trimming this panel down because it will help us out in the final assembly when all the pieces are the same size. Now I want to baste across here all around at a 1 8 inch seam allowance. Ok, 
Okay, so that's all done. And my pocket is closed off in the inside. Now I'm going to attach the main zipper using the Butler method by Amy Lynn Design. I have added the details to the video in the description below. I want to grab my front zipper pocket, my two linings for my main panel, and my number five zipper. Now I have marked the back of each of these pieces with the measurement that you will be able to find in the pattern. And that is part of using this butler method. I want to start with the exterior front zipper pocket first. I'm going to get my zipper with the tab on the right side and I'm going to put it right sides together and pin it so that the tab ends right at that point. Right there. and then clip that all the way across. And now I want to grab a lining piece and I want to pin that there as well, matching up that tab to that mark also. And then clip all the way down. Now I want to make sure that I've opened out my zipper and I want to start at the tab end and I want to sew across using a quarter of an inch seam allowance attaching my front zipper pocket and lining to the zipper. Now just a few stitches before I get to this marking here I am going to grab my hemostat and making sure my needle is dropped down into my fabric and I'm going to pull this zipper out just like that so that the teeth are now going out. And then I'm going to continue at a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Back space and then come back up here and then reinforce these zipper teeth in place using a 1 8 inch seam allowance. Be sure to move your number three zipper out of the way as well. Now I'm going to grab my hemostat. Now I am not going to top stitch this right now. I'm going to go ahead and attach these two pieces to this side of my zipper the same way. Now the way she has you do this in the pattern is to top stitch all the way down here at a 1 8 inch seam allowance and do the same thing on this side. But I do not want the bulk here in my seam so that when we go and do the final assembly it will go much better if I just top stitch from zipper to zipper. So I'm going to start here, top stitch all the way around top stitch at the end of my zipper tab and then come back down and end on this side. And that will be at a 1 8 inch seam allowance. Now go across my tab
is one of the reasons why I really like making her patterns because I learn something new every time. And I hope you learned something new with that too. That is definitely something I will be doing again. Now I'm going to jump ahead a little bit in the pattern and do my card slot flap first. So I need my exterior and my lining, my decaville, my two binding pieces, and my clear vinyl. And the binding, what I did was the same way I did the strap, folded in half, folded the two pieces in on itself, and then folded it in on itself again. I want to grab a couple of clips and put my binding on the clear vinyl. On both ends. And now I want to choose the pretty side. Let's see, yeah, I think this is a prettier side. So now I'm going to top stitch one eighth of an inch seam allowance across here, attaching my binding to my clear vinyl. And now I am using a Teflon foot. If you are not using a Teflon foot, you may um, need to use either a walking foot or you can use a piece of tissue paper. Now do the same thing on the other side. Now I want to grab my lining piece and I have a marking down here and now I want to clip like that. And you will notice that your um, vinyl piece is bigger. So you see how much bigger that is? It's just a tiny bit. Okay. So now what I want to do is I want to baste one eighth inch across the three sides. Do not close off your top because that's where your, your card slot is. Okay. I want to grab my exterior piece and clip this all the way around. Okay, now I want to sew using a one quarter inch seam allowance. Grab my pinky shears. Turn this all the way down. 
making sure to come close but not too close to those stitches. Okay, so now I'm going to stitch it around one more time just to give that stitching a reinforcement. Now I'm ready to turn this out on itself and be gentle. Just take your time. Now I'm not using a pointy end. I'm just using this and I'm just going and just, just gently going against there. Okay. Turning that out on itself. Now you do not want to heat up this vinyl. You want to be very careful. But what I am going to do is I'm going to heat up my mat and then put my vinyl over it so the vinyl absorbs the heat from the mat without ironing it. Okay. I really like the way this is coming out. <laughs> I really like that. Okay, so now I got my deck of ale. And I want to put this inside of here all the way down, making sure that it goes all the way inside of there. Now I'm going to top stitch all the way around. Now I want to add the snap to my flap here. Okay, so now I've punched the hole where I want my stamp to go. And I just want to put just a drip of freight check there on both sides. Okay. Now I want to add my snap. Okay. So now you can see that my snap is on right there. Now get, grab your card slots, there should be seven of them, put them right sides together, matching up the short ends, then pin across the top. Okay, so now I'm going to sew across using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Press my seam open and fold it right side out, putting that seam right in the middle of the pocket and then pressing it one more time again. Now I'm going to top stitch across the top using a 1 8 inch seam allowance. Now I'm going to do the same thing to the other six pieces.
Okay, now I have piece F with each of my markings for my seven card slots. I have my seven card slots and then the fussy cut, which is my eighth card slot. So let me fold this one so I don't get them mixed up with each other. Okay, so now you can see that I have marked on both sides all the seven card slots where they go. I'm going to start at the top marking, place my card slot on there, and pin it. Now I'm going to sew using a 1 8 inch seam allowance. And what it's going to do is it's going to close off this card slot. Now I'm going to continue doing that same thing, adding all of these card slots. Okay, so now all of my seven card slots are on there and they're all top stitched and everything and they look really good. Now I need to grab my fussy cut, determine which side is prettier. I like this side better. Okay, so now I've placed my fussy cut or my eighth card slot on here and I've clipped only the bottom layer to my panel. This isn't clipped. Okay, now I want to sew down here using a 5 8 inch seam allowance. So now I'm going to baste all these card slots down so that uh, they are secure on this panel. I'm going to start at the bottom and go all the way to the top, to the top card slot. Then I'm going to flip it around and do the same thing on this side using a 1 8 inch seam allowance. Now go slow because that's that's a lot of layers. Okay, now I want to flip it over and do the same thing on this side. And now I want to trim my sides down. Now this is the reason why I did my flap first because I want to make sure that this snap is going to line up perfectly with this one and have no issues. So I'm going to clip the top portion to itself. Then I'm going to make sure my flap is straight and my panel is straight with my card slots. Then I want to mark where my snap is going to go. So let me Okay. Okay. I only want to put my snap on this fussy cut portion and it seems like I didn't catch it in there so that's good because I would have had to unpick this. Now let me get my stamps again and now since there is no interfacing or anything in here what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a piece of Decaville and put it in there so that it will so that it'll stabilize that. Now I want to add the other side of this snap which is this piece and this piece. Okay, so now I want to get this and put it through the Decaville first and put it through here. 
Okay, and I only went through this fussy cut panel, not any of my card slots. But what I want to do is I want to put fray check on here so that there is no issues. Okay, and then add that snap. Now I'm going to use this side of the snap. Put it in there like that. Now make sure that my snap works, and it does. That works really good. That's all lined up. Okay. Now I can take my flap off, and I know now that that really, that snap is in the right spot now. Now I want to put the sides on this panel to complete it. So I'm going to put my pieces, right sides together on each end, and then clip it. Then do the same thing to the other side. Okay, so now I want to sew along these two edges using a one quarter inch seam allowance. And go slow because this is a lot of layers. And help your machine along if you need to. Almost. Okay, that's a lot of layers. But the machine did it. Help it along if it need, if you need to, but just go slow. Okay, so now I've gone ahead and I trimmed up my panel. I am not going to top stitch here because I don't know if my machine will go through all of that thickness. Now I'm going to add my lining to the left side of my panel. My card slots open this way. Okay, so I want it on the left side. Okay, so now I'm going to sew with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Okay, now I want to turn it back on itself and then top stitch at a 1 8 inch seam allowance. Okay, now I want to cut the edges off and cut anything down that needs to be cut down. Okay, now I want to grab my flap and snap that on there and clip it up at the top, making sure everything is even on there, and then clip the top. Okay, I really like that. That's coming together really nicely. Okay, so let me put that aside. Now I want to add my 
label to the right side and my D-ring to the left side. I have my zipper pocket face up and I want to baste the D-ring and the label only through this front panel. I want to make sure that my lining is out of the way. So now I'm going to baste at a 1 8 inch seam allowance. Okay, so now I marked my mark right here and right here to add this flap to this piece right here. Now what I want to do is I'm debating on whether or not I want to add a snap there. And I think I am going to add a snap. Um, yeah, I'm going to add a snap. I'll grab my snap pieces. And now, in the pattern, she gives you dimensions onto where your snap is going to go. Now I've marked right here where my snap is going to go. Okay. Now I got the measurement to where the hole goes into my lining off of the pattern and now I want to add the snap to there. Now I want to get some fray check. and this piece goes on that one. So now okay so that's on there really well. Okay now I want to find where the other side of my snap goes. Punch out the hole on this side as well. And now I put the hole only through this piece here. Now grab a piece of Decaville. Put my snap through there. Put a drop of fray check. And the reason why I put fray check is because this is cotton. I don't want there to be any problems in using this snap. Now we are ready for the final assembly. So I want to get my snap and snap it to there. Now, now I want to grab the flap and I want to put the flap right where it belongs. Right here. I'm going to snap that to make sure that that is just right on there and it is. Now I want to put all the pieces on this side for my exterior. I'm going to put my zipper, both of them in the middle and I want to open this out also. I want both lining pieces to be on this side. My main zipper, my number five zipper is in the center and then all the other layers are going to be on this side on the right. So now I want to get this seam right here, but make sure my zipper tab for my number five zipper is going towards the lining. And then I want to put these two seams right on each other. And I'm going to put a pin there. Okay. I want to do that same thing to this side as well. Put those two seams right with each other. And just take your time, make sure you're getting all of the layers. And this is where cutting all those pieces 
down afterwards it really helps in this section right here for the final assembly because now all of our pieces are the same size okay now in the lining portion I want to leave a section here open right after the curve here so I'm going to start here I'm going to backspace go all the way around and then come back here and backstate and backspace leaving this section open so that we can turn out this little purse we are going to sew the lining portion with a 3 8 inch seam allowance but the main portion we are going to sew at a quarter inch seam allowance now I've taken out my pin because I'm right at that seam and I don't want to run over my pin so now I'm going back out to a quarter of an inch and then going all the way down now here I want to make sure that my D ring is out of the way and I can feel it right here so I'm good on that to my pin so I'm going to take that out now I'm going to go back into 3 8 inch seam allowance okay everything looks good and now I'm going to now I'm going to stitch a second row of stitching on this side I'm not going to do it on my lining side just on my main pocket side and the reason why I'm going to do that is it's just reinforcing all of this that all looks good now I'm going to take my pinking shears and I'm going to cut down this end but I am NOT going to cut down my d-ring okay. okay that all looks good my corners are well rounded okay so now it's time to turn this little pouch right side out so go ahead and open up your zipper now that everything looks good now I'm going to close up the lining now that I'm happy with every, the way everything came out okay. 
Wow, that's perfect timing. I just ran out of bobbin. Oh my goodness. Ran out of bobbin right there. <laughs> oh, just that right at the end. Wow, I really, really like the way this little pouch came out, this little purse. Now, if you haven't gotten this pattern yet, remember there's an affiliate link in the description below and a coupon code that Jessie gives all of my subscribers 10% off of any of the patterns. Okay, so this one here is the all-new Polly's purse, and I hope you'll make it. Okay, until next time, I'll see you later. Bye.